Today's lesson will walk you through how to convert repeating decimals to fractions. Let's look at this first example. I have 0 and 61 hundredths repeating, so the 6 and the 1 are going to repeat forever. I see that with my bar notation. Now I have two numbers here in my repeating set, and my first goal is to move both of those to the left side of the decimal. Well, in order to shift two decimal places to the left, I have to multiply my number times 100. So if my number is my original, and this goes on forever and ever till the end of time, 100 times that should give me this number. Now, if I subtract those, what happens is everything to the right of my decimal until the end of time is going to cancel. That's a very good thing. So let's go ahead and subtract. Notice all of this cancels off. There's nothing after my decimal. I can simply subtract now. 61 minus 0 leaves 61 on the right hand side of my decimal or my equal sign. And 100 ends minus a single n will leave me 99 ends on the left side of my equal sign. In order to isolate my variable, I have to do the opposite of what I see here. So right now I have 99 times n. If I do the opposite and divide by 99 on the left, I also have to divide by 99 on the right. 99 divided by 99 leaves me with 1n. And my fraction is 61 over 99. Now I don't believe that that simplifies, so you have just changed or converted 0 and 61 hundredths repeating to its fraction form 61 over 99. Let's try again with this one. Now again, remember my first task is to move the repeating set to the left of the decimal. This time there are three numbers in the repeating set, so to shift three numbers to the left, I have to multiply by a thousand. So a thousand ends would shift one set of my repeaters to the left, and I'd have everything else to the right, blah, 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 to the end of time. The number itself was originally this, to the end of time, blah, blah, blah. If I were to subtract these, I would reach the goal of having everything after my decimal until the end of time gone, canceled, taken away. So now I only have to deal with my whole numbers. On the right hand side, 321 minus 0 is 321. On the left side of my decimal, 1000 ends minus 1 n is 999 ends. Now I'm almost there. I have to isolate my variable. To isolate it, I have to remove that multiply by 999. The only way to do that is to divide. I'm going to change my color. I'm going to divide by 999, both sides. When I do that, 999 divided by 999 leaves me with 1n on the left side of my equal sign. And then on the right, I have my fraction. Now this fraction is not in simplest form. I'm guessing that 3 goes into both of these. So you can either use your simp key on your calculator or you can just use your number sense. And when I simplify this, it will come down to 107 over 333. I think that's as far as it will go. You have converted 0 and 321 thousandths repeating into its fraction form of 107 over 333. Now this example is a little bit different. You'll notice that I have two numbers in my repeating set, but they are preceded by a 5. Now every other time I've wanted one of my repeating sets to move to the left. The 5 is going to have to tag along. 
So that means if I want the 37 to go over, the 5 has to go to the left as well. So I have three numbers that have to shift to the left. To be able to do that, I still multiply by 1,000. When I multiply by 1,000, this is what I will get, 37, 37, until the end of time. Now before we took 1n and we subtracted it, our n was our original, our original number, remember? And so when we subtract it, I want you to notice what's going to happen, blah, 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 to the end of time. That is not going to work. If you look over here, we don't have anything lined up. Our goal, remember, was to cancel everything from the decimal to the end of time. So let me erase this, and let's see what we can do about this. So I'm going to erase what I had. And let's see what happens if we shift everything one place to the left. So shifting one place to the left is the same as multiplying by 10. So if I multiply by 10, notice the 5 comes over to the left. But the 37, 37, 37 till the end of time remains on the right side of the decimal. And what that does for me now is when I subtract, things are lined up. I have my goal of canceling everything to the right of the decimal and leaving me only the whole numbers to deal with. So if I look, 537 minus 5 is 532 on the right side of the equal. And 1,000 ends minus 10 ends is 990 ends on the left side of the decimal. Just like always, to isolate our variable, we have to do the opposite here. Right now, I'm multiplying by 990, but I want to get rid of that. So to do that, I divide by 990 both sides. 990 divided by 990 leaves me with 1n on the left of my equal sign. And on the right, here's my fraction. They're both even, so I know that's not in simplest form. You can either use your calculator simp key, or you can use number sense. I know they're both going to be divisible by 2. That would give me 266 over 495. And I do believe that's probably in simplest form. So you have converted our original number into the fraction 266 over 495.